Even if you don't know the sci-fi significance of this gun, you gotta admit it looks pretty sleek. Based on the 6-inch P08 Luger, Armorworks built a full metal kit that completely transforms the look of this Star Trek blaster. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This is the Armorworks A180, inspired by the prop Jin Erso used in Star Wars Rogue One. This is the gun you are looking for. Because I know you'll ask, the base Luger is a little bit different than a standard one. You get a silver trim piece, a different rear sight, no front sight, and of course, most importantly, you get the screw holes on either side of the receiver, as well as on the bottom. It is completely compatible with WE Luger parts and mags, so theoretically, yes, it is possible to modify one to fit this front end, and Armorworks does sell it separately, but, of course, most collectors do want the full package, so as of now, we don't plan to sell it separately. Let's take a look at the packaging. This gun comes in two separate boxes. In one, you'll find that special edition Luger housed in molded cardboard protection. In the other, you'll find the front end kit housed in foam along with the hardware and the Allen keys. The packaging is pretty standard AW fare, and I mean, it'll protect the gun pretty well, but I definitely would have wanted to see some special edition presentation for the collectors. There are no instructions save for the AW info card, so let's go over how it all goes together. In the hardware bag, you'll find a total of 10 screws along with a sling mount. Separate them out, there are four different types of screws. These four button head screws will take the larger hex key and are for the sides of the kit. These four screws take the smaller hex key and are for the top of the kit. The smaller of the Phillips screws are for the bottom of the gun, and finally the larger Phillips screw is for that sling mount. The only tool that's not included is a Phillips screwdriver. Come on, I'm pretty sure you have one. First things first, you want to attach the sling point to the left piece of the front kit. The screw goes in the underside so you can't attach it after the fact. Next up, the front end slides over the barrel. You'll have to twist it slightly to clear this small screw. Line up the piece on the left side and screw in the top four screws. Don't screw them in too tightly for now to allow for some play. Lightly screw in the two screws on either side of the gun as well as the one underneath. Once all the screws are in place, tighten all of them. Just like putting rims on a car, you always want to tighten all screws simultaneously for the best fitment. Let's talk build quality. The base Luger is pretty standard, so I'm not going to go too in-depth into that, but it is fully constructed of metal and the fitment is pretty good. When you shake the whole gun, there's not too much rattle at all. Talking about the front, it is fully constructed of metal and once it's all mounted together, there is zero play at all from the kit to the gun. The finish on the Luger itself as well as that front end kit are properly done and I think look great. I also dig that two-tone look a lot. Now, collectors out there might want to weather it a bit just to look a little bit more like the film prop. It might not be to everyone's taste, but personally, I really like classic guns with a sci-fi twist, something like Wolfenstein or Killzone aesthetics. Ergonomically speaking, well, it's a Luger. You get a very canted and thin pistol grip, mag release that's a little bit too far forward and flush, and a safety that definitely wasn't meant to be used with one hand but I think Lugers are pretty cool. The way the toggle moves up and down and the whole mechanism cycles is just really nice to look at. It certainly takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's kind of like a classic car. That's sort of the charm of it. The base gun and the mag comes in at 863 grams or 1.9 pounds, and the front end kit with hardware comes in at 162 grams or 0.357 pounds, bringing the whole package to 1.03 kilograms or 2.27 pounds. For way of reference, a standard WE G17 with mag is 765 grams or 1.68 pounds. The whole package has a pretty decent heft to it, but the front end doesn't have that much weight, so the whole gun doesn't feel too front heavy at all. It's very pointable. Let's face it, most owners won't ever end up gaming this gun, and it's probably for the best. Sadly, it's not very practical. Allow me to explain. Starting with my biggest gripe, there's no front sight at all. Now there is a rear sight that is a pretty cool adjustable unit, but there's nothing up front to line it with. Of course, this is accurate to the movie prop. Then we have the issue of the toggle lock system. Basically, there's no slide catch, meaning no dry firing, and if the mag is empty, you have to drop the mag to drop the slide. But on top of that, you can't put in the mag unless the gun is cocked. 
If the gun runs out of gas mid-magazine, the magazine won't eject until you rack the slide. Altogether, it's a slightly convoluted system that's bound to cause you some frustration in the heat of a game. Finally, just like 1911s, the mag barely holds any gas. Now, it does hold 15 rounds, but you'll be lucky to get off 10 unless it's a particularly hot day. I know this wasn't in the movie, but anyone with one of these guns or even a Luger should definitely take a look at one of these, the 50 round snail mag. Of course, this does bump up the gas capacity drastically and it can get through all the rounds. To use this bad boy, first you wind the latch counterclockwise and lock in the latch. This isn't a winder like on high caps, but rather pulls down the follower, making it easier to load. Load up the BBs through the top and gas it up. Gas goes through the front, you have to hold it for a little while as it is quite a big tank. Let's take a look at that trigger. The trigger hole is quite small, so glove wearers beware. The shape is very rounded and quite wide, but it's really comfortable on the finger. Take up is about two millimeters and the pull is very light. You hit the wall of stiffer travel and about one millimeter later, you get the brake, which is very clean. There is no over travel. The reset is right where the wall begins and clicks nicely. Overall, the travel is short and actually is a very nice trigger to use. As far as power goes, with the standard armor work barrel installed, FPS starts at about 330 and drops off rather quickly. I did notice the consistency was pretty wild, most likely due to the smaller gas chamber. With the snail mag, we were getting about the same velocity to start with, but we were getting excellent consistency, dropping off very steadily as it went through the mag. Accuracy wise, well, it could be the most accurate pistol on the market, but I wouldn't know without a front sight. It does feel pretty consistent when you hold it on target though, and the excellent trigger definitely helps. And there you have it, the Armor Works A180. A beautiful display piece that not only looks unique, but is based on a unique gun as well. Personally, I really think they should have added that front sight, even if it's different than the movie prop. I'd still love to game it, even with all its quirks, and it just feels special to shoot. As always, thanks for watching, subscribe for more content, lots of new pistols coming in, and we'll catch you on the next one.